four spiritual gifts, what they are and how they operate. The Lord has been gracious and opened the heavens and has been releasing to us revelation that is actionable. Actionable spiritual intelligence that will enable us to live better. And today, by the grace of the Lord, we are on lesson 15, spiritual gifts and pursuit of destiny. And this is so important. The connection between spiritual gifts and destiny is something that every one of us needs to be convinced or persuaded of so that we can be serious when we are considering the issue of spiritual gifts. Let's pray. Father in heaven, thank you for the opportunity to share this word which we receive from you for your sins. And we pray that the Holy Spirit will bypass the limitation of your servant as a human and just speak to the heart of everyone that this class may be blessed. And those who watch the recording will be blessed equally in Yeshua's name. Amen. Brothers and sisters, one of the things we need to take note of is that human beings generally, they live by ambition. What they want, they go for it. There's no bearing on what the Lord has ordained for them. And they go about it in the arm of the flesh. They go about it by their abilities, by their strengths, whatever they think of. In pursuit of their ambition, they can pull down, they can tear down, they can eat up, they can dis destroy lives of other people who seem to be in the way to achieve what they want. And when we are believers, when we are children of the Most High, we cannot live that way. We cannot love the world or the things of the world. We cannot live under the influence of Satan, who is the prince of the power of the air, and who rules those who are in the world, as First John chapter 5, I mean chapter 2, 15 to 17, and First John 5, 19 tells us, you know that we are Elohim, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. So it is important, therefore, that we do things differently from the world, whereas the world works by ambition, works by personal drive, bulldozing the way forward. The Lord tells us something in Romans chapter 8 from verse 5 to 14, for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. Then verse 6, for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against Elohim. It is not subject to the law of Elohim, neither indeed can it be. The carnal mind is enmity. That's why the Lord doesn't want us to move by a carnality of mind. You know, what we see, what we feel, what we hear, you know, what we taste. He doesn't want it to drive our lives. Our lives are supposed to be driven by the Holy Spirit as said in the book of that same Romans 8 verse 14, as many as are led by the Spirit of Elohim, they are the sons of Elohim. We are supposed to be driven by the Spirit of Elohim in all things. And Holy Spirit does not strive. We yield to Him, leads us. That's why we are told two things we shouldn't do. One. He said, do not grieve Holy Spirit, as we were told in Ephesians 4.30. And number two, 1 Thessalonians 5.19 says, quench not the Spirit. So, if we want to truly walk in destiny, we got to make sure we don't do things that grieve Him or things are quenching. And one of the key ways to make sure we do this is by allowing Him to lead and if we're going to allow him to lead, allowing him to show up through us, which is really what spiritual gifts are all about. First Corinthians 12, 7, the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. So a spiritual gift is a manifest a spiritual gift is a manifestation of Holy Spirit through the vessel who is blessed. So the Lord wants us to come to that place where we enter through worship. Through worship is not when you sing some songs, slow beat songs, and draw it out. No, through worship is more than that. Lifestyle worship, where everything we do, our thought, our will, our actions, everything is as led by Him. 
we come to a place where our lives glorify him in Ephesians 4 11 that worthy O Lord to receive glory and honor and power for that has created all things and for that pleasure they are we created it's a lifestyle where our attitudes our actions are all wrapped up around him we're not pursuing bread and butter so to say we are pursuing the lord we are pursuing his kingdom and all the other things people are pursuing he grants it to us and one way to live that kind of life is to live by our spiritual gifts power in our lives we're going to come to that in a moment the lord said in jeremiah in chapter 1 verse 5 before i formed thee in the bed i knew thee before thou camest forth out of the womb i sanctified thee and ordained thee to be a prophet unto the nation that's what he told jeremiah and the lord is saying that to all of us that before we were conceived the lord knew us he knew what he planned to accomplish through each and every one of us and he had invested in each of us the capacity to be who he called us to be he who planned he had a location and starting with spiritual gifts the lord has already ordained that it is a gift that we use to achieve what the lord has ordained for us brothers and sisters paul the apostle was a man like us you know what he was used extraordinarily why two things one he got a clear vision of what the lord wanted to do with him and he had a capacity to the gifting of the lord that was in him that's why when paul was talking about the way he accomplished what the lord put in him he used these words in first first corinthians chapter 15 said in verse 9 for i'm the least of the apostles and i'm not me to be called an apostle because i persecuted the church of elohim but by the grace of the lord i am what i am and his grace which was bestowed upon me was not in vain, but I labored more abundant than they, or yet not I, but the grace of Elohim which was in me. The grace of Elohim was manifested by the giftings in him that he deployed wholly, so that at the end of the day, in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 6 to 8, he could tell Timothy, listen, I finished my assignment. He was a man that was going to be beheaded, his head was going to put on the chopping blocks and he'll take an axe to cut it off. There was no worry, no anxiety, because he had dispensed. You see, our spiritual gifts are like bullets inside our beings, you know. When we discharge them all, there's nothing more to do. And so, all the, in the Bible, you see people. How did Joseph get by his gift? Dreaming of dreams and interpreting of dreams. He took him to the top as prime minister of Egypt. How did Daniel become who he became? It was his gift of wisdom and interpretation of dreams. And through that, he became president of Babylon and became chief advisor to emperors, about three emperors or so. Men and brethren, it's so important that we understand that spiritual gifts represent what the Lord gives us as the basis of our spiritual DNA. Every other thing is supposed to be built around it because a man's gift, as the Bible says, will make room for him. So, if you have a spiritual gift, the Lord is saying, I want you to swim with the current, not against the current. Let the current carry you. And that's what the Lord is saying, that if we do not discover a gift, we might be struggling against the current, and there may be so much stress and effort. But when you discover your gifts and live by them, walk by them, is Holy Spirit using our vessels to express the will and purpose of the Father without our human effort. We're not driven by ambition. We're driven by vision. We're not driven by human uh, desires. We're driven by Elohim's desires. And that's what happens. And that's why I want to drop for you in this particular lesson. The six preliminary requirements for destiny fulfillment. As saints, each of us is called to be passionate in pursuit of destiny. 
that requires a change in our priorities, a paradigm shift in our mindset, a different way of looking at life. What are those six requirements? Number one, hearing and knowing the voice of the Father. See, John 10, 27 says, my sheep hear my voice. When you have the innate capacity to hear the voice of the Lord concerning what he wants to do with us, where he wants to take us, what he approves for us to do, the great shepherd is always speaking by the Spirit. We need to tune our ears to hear him clearly for major decisions, for average decisions, for minor decisions. If we hear him and obey his voice, we are in safe territory. We are in safe ground. Number two, we need to have a clear vision of who he has called us to be and what he wants us to do. Who he has called us to be, what he wants us to do. With no clear vision of what Elohim created, redeemed, and preserved our lives to be and do, somebody will just lead, you know, it will lead to confusion, unnecessary pain, and destruction. Proverbs 29, 18 says, where there is no vision, the people perish. And he that keepeth the law happy is he. Every time you see an individual has no vision, it's a pathway of destruction. The third thing the Lord wants us to know is walking in his will. We hear his voice, we have a vision, walk in his will. We understand whether it is a perfect will of Elohim for us to proceed in a specific direction, do a particular business, you know, move in a particular direction. We need to know that we are in His will. It gives security to know that. Number four, knowing the specific location in which He wants to use us optimally. This is a factor that is no longer often discussed. There are specific locations the Lord wants to use you optimally. So we don't move from place to place as men move, you know, based on demographics and reports by the newspapers and analysis by New York Times and Washington Post and, um, you know, uh, The Economist or all those uh, publications, no matter their reputation. No, we know where does the Lord want us to be and what does he want us to do? Because there's a tie-up between our location and our effectiveness. If you're in the wrong location, even though you have all the capacities, you may not be able to function as effectively as you ought to. The number five, the Lord has appointed destiny helpers for everyone, every believer. The Lord has appointed destiny helpers and it started with your parents who regard you or guardians as the case may be, you know, teachers, you know, pastors, people he has put in your part. There are also some people the Lord has given specific assignment to help to open doors for you, help to, you know, put you on shoulders to see further. To ability to see them, know them, connect with them is very, very, very essential. I can tell you this. There is no way I would ever leave without giving credit to the reality that in the year 2001, the Lord sent a destiny help us from Austin, Texas. A passion for America didn't start for today. We had also even had relationship with ministries in America before them, but there was something different from, a, in the case of Apostle Vance and uh, Apostle Debbie and, you know, their ministry. It was that this was the specific thing I needed at the time I needed it. At the time we needed, we needed guidance, what the Lord had been saying since 1996, and you know, the call towards the apostolic, I had no idea how to proceed, we had no idea how to proceed. It was when they came into our lives that the Lord used them to identify that apostolic calling and provide the basic infrastructure for it to become manifest. So we always, always, always give credit to that role in our lives. And so it's also that every one of us at any given time in our lives, in fact it may be destiny, help us for specific seasons of life. And what people don't know is when, how to embrace all. You know, when we connected to Apostle Vance and Apostle Debbie, you know what? We embraced 
all that the Lord could offer us through them. And it became critical. And the period of time that the Lord used them mightily was between 2001 and 2003, before the Lord told them to move on into what he was calling them with their own mentor, Bishop Bill Hammond. You know, who has been their mentor for a very long time. And, so, and they have been with him for so many years. I don't know, maybe 30 years or so. It's been a long time. So brothers and sisters, destiny help us are real. And then the sixth one is knowing our spiritual gifts and other virtues that make up our spiritual DNA. And that's why this course is still is truly a game changer for as many as will diligently take it to heart and go to find out. Because the Bible says in Proverbs 18, 16, a man's gift make a room for him. Your spiritual gift is designed to make room for you, to bring you before great men, that is to say, get you to place a breakthrough. That which you could not achieve in the natural, by your primogeniture, your family background, your name, your education, your gifting will make, it, will make it possible. So do not be casual about the revelations in this course. It is about your, your destiny and the divine way to fulfill the same. And so it's important that you need to come to a place where you can ask the questions. Of the, seven, of the seven root gifts or basic service gifts mentioned in the book of Romans chapter 12 from verse 6 to 8, out of the seven, how many of them represent what the Lord put in you as, a, as spiritual gifts? Is it one or two or three? You need to know and know that you know. Number two, the power gifts that represent what we receive after the baptism of the Holy Spirit Acts 1, 8, and then in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, from verse 8 to 10, there are nine of them. Out of the nine, how many of them do you do receive? How many of them do you know that is ill, is inside of you? Men and brethren, then out of the 12 other gifts found in various parts of the scripture, you know, that we mentioned in one of the lessons, two lessons rather, those 12 other gifts, how many of them are given to you? And then the question again, the fourth question is, out of the fivefold of his gifts, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher, are you called to the fivefold? If you are not called on bother, there are enough of those other gifts for you to be able to design, to be able to know and be effective. Don't make yourself what the Lord didn't make you. And if you made a fivefold officer, in the kingdom, don't allow religion, don't allow cultural limitations, don't allow disapprovals of humans to deter you from stepping into what the Lord has called you to be. Brothers and sisters, if you will take your spiritual gift audit seriously, the Lord will surely help you to grab all of them, walk in the reality of them, and that simply means your vessel will be made available for Holy Spirit to show up to worship Elohim and to bless humanity and edify the body of Yeshua. And that is true success, really. True success is not pursuing all those you know, you know, vanities. No. No. It's a labor not for the middle perish it. The Lord wants us to know that if a Christian, his concept of success is not the same as the world. And so, the concept of success is that you achieve all for which you were created. It was said of Yeshua, Lo, I come in the volume of the book, it is written of me to do thy will. Men and brethren, let it be written of us, let it be said of us that we discovered all that is written of us in the volume of the book. We effectively fulfill them all, not by our power, but by his grace working in us, working through us, and we're effective in that regard. May you share this video, and before we finish the series, we're going to share with you uh, in a simple tool that the Cosmos Electrical, you know, developed for people to be able to identify their spiritual gifts. It's important, you know, if you have not been able on your own to know, that tool will help you to kind of show you potentially what you may be called to be and to do. Please share this video, encourage 
brothers and sisters and friends to get to know these truths and get to receive these truths and let it come and become real in your life and in their life. So by way of assignment, number one, what new thing did you learn from this lesson? Two, please mention and briefly explain the six preliminary requirements for success in life that we outlined here. We're going to pray right now. I want to stretch your hand towards the Lord, Father in heaven. The great I am, who I am, we pray that your name be glorified, that the truth that has been shared will penetrate, and your people will receive it and walk in the truth, and your name shall be honored and glorified. Bear, let the, this world, the seed, bear fruit, hundredfold, and your name be glorified in Yeshua's name. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for being with us on this program and watching and we believe you learned something and the Lord bless you. Now it's time to connect with us on our social media platforms. We have a daily live stream on Facebook Monday all the way to Sunday every day by about 10.30 a.m. UK time and that's the same at Nigerian time and you, it's either Apostle George Monday to Friday uh, to Thursday, Pastor Grace uh, Friday to Sunday and then in the evening of Sunday we have two sessions from 5.30 to about 6 after 6 another one up to 7 so please join us on the live stream and you're going to enjoy it we also visit our website www.gsom.ac to download free ebooks this course you just listened to all these lessons you know there's an ebook we have free of charge everything we do is free but more importantly you can actually do your program on you know ebooks you can do your program entirely on ebooks and with this video or anyone you want you can also if you want to do the yes course or be, do the master class you can go to www.kingdomboostclub.com and you can subscribe so that you can do it you can also subscribe to our channels this youtube gsom.tv and we also have a telegram channel gsom media you can send us an email at aklife.tv at gmail.com we love you dearly and we want to partner with you to make sure that the body of yeshua jesus is empowered with truth remember it is the teach train equip activate and release paradigm absolutely free of charge have a blessed day and we'll see you again soon